So it sounds like I only have 40 minutes before the servers go down for several hours. So... I'm not actually gonna do any prep time for this one. Prepare for complete disorganization. Alright, so... You've seen, uh, the introduction? You've seen the tanking? Yeah, you totally watch those. Everybody watches everything. That's how it works. Here's the one for healing! So, the format of this one is going to be slightly different. Um, the servers are going to go down fairly soon, so I don't get to do extensive prep work to prepare exactly what I would do if I hadn't already settled on my healing build, which I definitely have. So what we're going to do for this one is I'm just going to run over what I have got and explain why. So across the actives, first up, you see Deadly Aim. Yes, that totally benefits healing, right? Actually, it does, but mostly it's a group buff because this is set up for nightmares. It's nice to just throw that out. It's an extra little damage buff for him. It helps group performance. Uh, my elite there is Radiance. This, as you can see, for the next 6 seconds, all your heal over time effects are guaranteed to critically heal and heal for 50% more. Now, the basis of this build, it's an almost pure fist build. In fact, all of these abilities come out of fists, and that one's pistols. Just because. I can throw on pretty much any weapon I want in the other one, and it doesn't really affect anything. Um, but this works particularly well in combination with my passive elite, which is whenever a heal over time effect critically hits, the target is healed for 532 based on my plus heal. So those two mean that you can heal a massive damage spike very quickly. So now we're going to pause and we're going to talk about the Fury of Healing. So. Typically, in any game, thinking in terms of a raid setting, you have several types of healers. You've got two kinds of main tank healers, alright, if it's a particularly vicious thing. This is how we did it way back in the day in World of Warcraft, before that it all became spasmatically easy and a mentally retarded chimpanzee would be capable of raid healing. Of course, some people still manage to fail at raid healing, so... I don't really want to speculate on what their intelligence quotient is. Anyway, the two types that we used to use were the kind of nuke healers. These would be the G healers. They'd have longer cast times, heal for more, but be less capable of covering small spikes. We'd also have the kind of offset healers. Now, the way we did that was, you know, paladins would be using the flash heals, it heals for a small amount, but it keeps things topped up. And then the big hits get healed by priests with great heals. That's just... It, it worked. It worked. And then the other main type you have is raid healers. So they're pretty much adept at hopping between targets, throwing the heals where needed. They can support heal on tanks if something's particularly vicious, but generally speaking, don't need to. Of course, in a Secret World dungeon group, you need to be all three at once. The raid may be different, but for now, Nightmares is the pinnacle of what you can do in this game. So, you need to cover offset damage on the tank, keep them topped up. You need to heal spike damage on the tank, so if they take a big hit, you need to be able to get it healed up quickly before they take another one and get killed. And you also need to be capable of healing your group. Now, Awareness and fast target switching has a lot to do with this, uh, which is why I've gone on huge rants about the UI design and why having the group frames over here is freaking horrible, and why, unfortunately you can't see it, but I've now modded them to all be horizontal here and work with mouse overs. So I can just go bam, 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 and just quick heal. You know, bam, 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 done. It's great. So, first up, the offset healing to keep the tank topped up. Pretty much these three abilities here, which I'm using Nurture, Surgical Steel, and Cauterize. And the trick to these is, well, I'll cover these more in a moment, but essentially I'll apply the Nurture, well, Cauterize first, Nurture, 
cauterize, surgical steel, and hop between those two a couple, and then refresh the nurture and hop between those two a little. You can just spam that, not pay, uh, not pay any particular attention, and your tank will just laugh. Like, the heal per second of these... Um, in fact, let's click this to heal, and I can do it on myself for a moment. So, if I'm hitting this... Yep, nice heal meter. Well, that's working beautifully. Unfortunately, it's not. So you can't see, but the short vision is I can heal about... A lot. I can heal a lot. That's all you need to know. <laughs> watch watch me healing, and you'll see that I don't particularly struggle. Um, so yeah, that's that. To cover the group healing, I can just target switch and throw those around... Or I've also got Shelter, which is useful when everybody's clustered, and it's also an extra hot. It, it's kind of good. So that's that. To cover damage spikes, and this is why we cut across to discuss that, Radiance, in combination with Empowerment, will heal an absurd amount incredibly quickly. Like, you can drop your tank down to, like, 5% health and have them back up to 100% again in about 2 or 3 seconds. It's incredibly quick. Um, and we've also got Empathy, which is a nice chunk heal. And heals for more if we've got a heal over time on them. I, I don't know if we'll have a, a heal over time on them. What do you, what do you think? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> so, the passives. First up, making amends. Heal over time effect is 10% more effective. I think that one probably speaks for itself, considering four of those are heal over time effects. We also have over here, Shadow Medic, all your direct heal abilities. So the initial heal value, so here, heals the defensive target for 392. Uh, let me just figure out where I left Shadow Medic for a moment so I can show this one. Okay, so the current figure is 392. Drag that off. It drops down to 365. Shadow Medic does affect those initial heal values. And it also affects Empathy. And I think... I think it affects Empowerment. Let me just double check that. 521. Drag it off. Still 521. Okay, maybe it doesn't. But that might even be... Hmm. 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 Well, this is all about Fairycraft. This is why this is so interesting. you got to just get... I, I was about to say balls deep. Let's not say that. Let's say up to your neck in it. Yes. Yes. That's far more politically correct. So, my next passive is Nurturing Gift, which sounds like junk. It just means that I can spam those without refreshing Nurture so often. Not a biggie. Um, hot Iron. This is where it gets kind of interesting. <laughs> that... Um, racks up so quickly so quickly I mean let's see one two three four five six seven bam the next nurture is a big heal uh, you probably get away better if you used it on cauterize but you know either way that's that's how that works it builds up incredibly quickly and particularly if you can time the full seven stacks for when you need to pop, say, Empathy or Cauterize. That's infinitely better because it'll just heal for a huge chunk. We covered Shadow Medic. Uh, next up is Healing Sparks, which is whenever you activate a Burst Ability, blah, blah, blah. It's an extra heal over time. Burst Ability is Surgical Steel, and that's what procs that. And I'm also using Improved Bursts because that improves the initial heal value of this by a relatively tiny amount. Um, let me just show you that one. 192 and it goes up to 205. So it's a small improvement, but honestly, uh, if we didn't use that one, we'd be using like Glimmer of Hope, which... Yeah. That's just a self-heal. And honestly, it's not difficult to just quickly switch to yourself and throw up a nurture. Which doesn't heal for as much. Hmm. Interesting. Well, you get the idea anyway. 
Uh, so that's that's why my healing build looks how it does. I can offset heal and keep the tank topped up incredibly well with the hearts. I've got burst healing functionality by popping empathy, or if it's really nasty, I can throw up radiance. Uh, all those buff it up. Um, I've got general AoE capability, like I'll throw out shelter, generally speaking. And the one that comes to mind is... Oh, which boss is it in Polaris? The third boss, where in the second phase he kind of transitions, he runs off, you get to the selection of crates with the water that's electrocuted, and he periodically electrocutes your crate. When I'm expecting that, I will hop nurture around on all the group members, and then use shelter to just heal through it, so nobody needs to move. That's an example of how that works, and you can also just use it to top people off when they're grouped up. It's it's valid. Um, another possible option for that one, and what I used to use, is Vigor, which you can actually... It's got a broken tooltip, apparently. How annoying. That's actually a targeted circle, so it was possible to throw that under the tank, for example, where I wouldn't actually have to run in. It would just be right under him, and it would work. Ah yes, making amends. I want to just test that one quickly. So, empowerment. It's apparently healing for 526 right now. I guess we captured something in Fusang. Drop that off. And it's still 526. So that's pretty impossible to alter. It's kind of depressing in many ways. Oh well. So that's just based purely on your heal rating. Okay. So, okay, I'm using a pure fists build. It works very well. I would fully recommend it. There are alternatives. Uh, Blood Magic, for example, has a lot of healing in here, and this is more of a nuke healing setup. Uh, it relies on, as you can see, chunk heals and barriers to deal with large hits. Um, the kind of cornerstone of this one is Angelic Hages, which heals 916. That's, that's not a small amount. Um, personally, I'd still be combining this with Fists, because Fists is a very powerful healing tree. The other ones to look at is Assault Rifles, which has some functionality, but is mostly kind of crappy. All of this, it has cooldowns, so it's more of a support healing ability, or something to use to support something like Blood, or even Fists, rather than something to actually heal exclusively with. Uh, there's also some functionality over in pistols, but generally speaking, um, you're really looking at mostly fists and blood, because they're the real the real cornerstones to healing. Um, I demonstrate a blood build, but honestly, eh, it's more fun if people engage with it themselves, and if you really struggle, by all means, fire up a discussion in the comments. I would be happy... I'd be overjoyed to theorycraft with people. Um, that's endless fun. And in terms of the miscellaneous trees, because sometimes those are useful, this is more PvP focused. It's crap. Sometimes subtlety, for example, is useful. I do not use it because if your DPS are on the ball, they should be able to pick off ads quick enough. If your tank isn't retarded, they should be tanking everything they need to do, and you should not be capable of out-threading them with heals, unless you're doing something really freaking weird. Um, and, of course, there are occasions where you actually want to heal tank, where you do want the aggro. And so threat reduction is it harms your ability to do that. Um, I do really wish I could show a heal meter on here. Uh, attention, the server's coming down in 30 minutes. Well then, this probably will be relatively short. Healing, healing you just need to consider that your job is to keep people alive. <laughs> and the free considerations are the offset healing, keeping everybody topped up, the Nuke healing, like the big heals, when a damage spike is received, you need to be able to deal with that. And also group healing, which generally speaking, uh, unless you have a horribly inefficient system with cast times, you can just target switch to heal them. 
you may want some AoE healing in there just in case everybody is taking uniform damage simultaneously. But healing, healing is very straightforward. In terms of group synergy, um, well, you can throw some buffs on or throw greater good on to buff yourself. Um, personally, based on the fact that I'm using Empowerment over here, Deadly Aim is a better healing buff than Greater Good is, in my opinion. In my opinion. Uh, this just me. There's some other stuff to consider, but, you know, um, we're going to talk about that in... And I think I'll make a, a group synergy video with deck building after I've covered Nightmare DPS, because... That's where it gets really complicated, but also really cool. Like the kind of things you can achieve when you get five people to construct builds that all work together to be total ownage. Uh, anyway, I hope this was interesting. I hope it was informative. I hope that people are pumped about making decks. I don't know. I hope people are pumped about playing this game. This is a good game. You should all play it. If you're not playing it, why aren't you playing it? In fact, why are you watching this video if you ain't playing the game? This is... This is Go watch a dungeon video. That'll advertise to you better. For now, I'm going to say, please hit some buttons. Just hit buttons. Buttons, buttons, buttons. And I'll see you next time when we'll be covering Nightmare DPS decks. Peace out.